We're planning a departure at a Taylor, Arizona on a hot, cloudy day. We're taking off into low clouds, so we'll want to be sure we have the climb performance to get above any obstacles as we won't be able to see them. We're going to want to know what kind of climb performance we can expect in our Cessna 172. So Taylor's up at 6,000 feet pressure altitude and the temperature outside on the field is 30 Celsius. We want to get a look at our climb gradient taking off into these conditions. The book says we should do 425 feet per minute. We need to add 10% more time for the climb for each 10 degrees Celsius over standard we are. Standard temp at 6,000 feet is 3 Celsius, so we're almost 30 over standard. It'll take us 30% longer to climb, meaning our climb rate will be lower by 30%. Subtracting 30% from 425, we get a climb rate of 300 feet per minute. Now we need to convert that to a climb gradient. We take our climb speed, which is VY at this altitude, 73, and divide it by 60. It's about 1.2, which will divide into the climb rate to get a climb gradient of about 250 feet per nautical mile. This is very low, by the way. We'll need to find a departure procedure that allows us to climb at such a low angle. This is the CAM before departure out of Taylor. It's used only for runway 3 and has transitions to the northwest and to the east. In the minimums notes, it says though that we need a minimum climb of 500 feet per nautical mile. There are obstructions on runway 3 we won't be able to outclimb with our performance. The takeoff minimum section tells us about runway 2-1 also though. It says the minimums are 300 and 1. This means that the weather needs to be 300 foot ceilings with a mile of visibility. Looking outside, the clouds are below 300 feet, even though the visibility is a bit more than a mile. But there's an or. It says or we can have standard conditions, meaning one mile of visibility, as long as we can maintain a 260 foot per nautical mile climb out. Unfortunately, we failed that too, as we calculated a 250 foot per nautical mile climb out. There's a third option though. It says, or alternatively, with standard takeoff minimums and a normal climb out at 200 feet per nautical mile, we have to take off no later than 2100 feet prior to the departure end of the runway. Standard instrument departures assume three things. First, we cross the departure end of the runway at least 35 feet up. Second, we make no turns until 400 feet above the departure end of the runway elevation. And third, we climb at least 200 feet per nautical mile. 35 feet is very low to be crossing over the other end of the runway. Our runway at Taylor is over a mile long. If we take off well in advance of the other side, we should be able to clear the departure end of the runway by well over 35 feet. Can we do that and overcome the obstacles even with our lower climb angle? The FAA says yes we can, as they give us a third option to make a standard climb out in standard conditions as long as we can take off no later than 2100 feet prior to the departure end of the runway. The runway at Taylor is 7000 feet long. If we take off with 2100 feet to spare, we'll need 4900 feet of ground roll. Let's go back to the POH. At 6,000 feet and 30 degrees of temperature, we need 1,800 feet to roll down and leave the ground. Plenty of room to get off before we need to. So that third option allows us to depart. Now, climbing out at barely standard climb angles is pretty poor performance. Here's what it looks like rumbling down the runway. We do indeed leave the ground with plenty of room, but our climb angle is awful. Even climbing out at VX with 10 degrees of flaps in. We cross the runway about 200 feet over the ground, way over the standard 35 feet. So that's the benefit of being able to leave the runway earlier. Our climb out barely meets the standard 200 feet per minute, and we spend a lot of time up close and personal with terrain. The lesson, even though this is a perfectly legal takeoff under IFR, it's far from feeling like a safe one, and what keeps you legal often doesn't guarantee safety. Have you still not grabbed your free IFR study guide? Thousands of your fellow pilots have their copy. Get yours today, linked here and below, and breeze through your instrument checkride with Flight Insight.